morning, everybody. My name is Sven Rein. I'm the president of Lux Real, and I welcome you to our first uh, webinar uh, virtual platform to keep up our exchange with you, our members, and our friends and followers. I trust you're all doing well, either being at home working remote or maybe in the office. Um, we are now in the fifth week of this uh, very particular situation. And as we've not been able to realize our physical events, like our reception cocktail we have planned at MIPIM in, in Cannes, we as a board, we thought of how can we still keep up the exchange in our network in Luxembourg, all around real estate and all around the different uh, sectors in real estate. So today uh, it's a it's a novum. It's the first start uh, of a series of webinars which we have planned in the future. As you all know, it's probably not going to be possible to arrange any other uh, physical uh, events over the next uh, couple of months, maybe till year's end. Um, nevertheless, uh, I think we all it's it's important that we exchange what's ongoing and we share best practice and uh, market intelligence among us. So in that, con in that context, today is our first seminar. We have planned for an hour. Um, we have uh, two panelists with us. But uh, before that, uh, let me uh, just uh, uh, share with you a little bit uh, what we have going through over the last uh, weeks. Uh, uh, everything is locked down, as you know, and it's going to continue probably till uh, there is a light uh, opening of the lockdown for a couple of weeks. And I guess that's in line with uh, the CSSF uh, expectations that everybody should be cautious to continue like that at least to the 24th of May. After that, uh, there will be probably an opening of the primary schools and uh, the daycare centers as uh, a lot of us uh, have to deal with working at home maybe uh, both partners working and having kids running around us and to deal with that that's an extra burden on us but um, uh, it's necessary as well that the economy keeps going we have uh, many retail sectors who are closed and who are suffering badly whereas the financial industry at least is able to continue its business working remote from home so that's important that we all keep going and we we uh, survive the crisis so for housekeeping matters, I would like to invite you to use a chat button. We have a chat button on our um, webinar. You might look at the screen where you are able to, um, to post any questions uh, to, to me as uh, the moderator of today. Um, I'll try to see how I can arrange it while moderating this uh, webinar to read the questions and to sort and filter and to throw them at my panelists. We won't have time to go through all of the questions. We have already received some questions in advance, which we did build in in our um, seminar today. So uh, just for your uh, information. Another information is that uh, it appears that it's an interesting topic as we have 176 registrations today for our webinar. Having said that, I have the great pleasure to introduce uh, my two panelists. Um, probably most of you know both uh, gentlemen. To start with, uh, Vincent Bechet. Vincent Bechet, first of all, he's a former president of Luxreal, but he is uh, managing director at Innoway since September 2006. Vasson works with the major stakeholders within the Luxembourg real estate market and brings his expertise to the various stakeholders on major real estate projects within Luxembourg. Vasson is a member of the Luxreal Advisory Board and former president of Luxreal and sits on the board of BLSC, which is the Belgian Luxembourg Council of Shopping Centers. He's a member of the board of directors of ULI, the Urban Land Institute, as well member of ASHAM, the American Chamber of Commerce in Luxembourg. As well, he is a member of the RISPS. So welcome, uh, Vincent, to join us. Many thanks, Vincent, to be uh, our trustful uh, um, former president and still member of Luxreal. And Romain Müller. Romain Müller is as well a board member of Luxreal, an active board member. And, uh, and Romain Müller has 25 years of real estate experience in Luxembourg. 
where he was uh, leading JLL for 18 years. And um, as a Luxembourger, he went through different transformations of the Luxembourgish real estate markets, such as the uh, arrivals of the private banks in the mid 80s, the slowdown in 2001, the 9 11 event, and the economical crisis in 2008, 2008, and the departure of the private banks. Today, Omar is about to launch his first real estate investment fund and works for a European asset manager within. 1.2 billion of retail assets. So thank you both again for joining us and uh, let me kick off today's uh, webinar with a question I start with Vincent, with Vincent. Vincent, how do you personally deal with that situation and how you as a company in a way is uh, managing the challenge working remote and how are you able to maintain the services um, for your customers? Please. Thank you, Sven. Um, uh, I guess we are doing what you will do for, for most of you, uh, meaning uh, home working. Uh, and it's impressive how quick all of us uh, have been able to uh, reorganize the way of working in a couple of days. Uh, but from that to, to mid March. So, our company is working mainly on the home working uh, basis. We have uh, organized the, the, the flow uh, of documents uh, through uh, digitalization, and uh, we keep of contact with our customer uh, through uh, uh, video conference and, and uh, other way. Uh, to, to, to transmit documents. We use uh, DocuSign uh, to continue uh, acting on behalf of our clients, especially uh, banks in regard of the property management and, and uh, other uh, contracts are uh, uh, on a smooth way uh, using those new uh, digitalization uh, tools. Uh, for some, we knew them, and for some, uh, we quickly learn how to use it. So, uh, regarding that experience, I'm sure you have uh, before COVID-19 and you will have uh, after COVID-19 regarding, and it's one of the questions, regarding the home working. And ha have you had to adapt uh, majorly to be able to continue your work, or would you say that you've been pretty much already uh, uh, prepared for such a, a, a exceptional situation? No, I will be a liar to, to say that we, we, we were fully prepared to a such situation. It was really an unexpected situation to manage, uh, but it's, it, it's partly pre-organized through a, a continuity plan of activity that, that we have. Uh, but we, we did not expect something uh, like that uh, because not only you are uh, 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 impacted by the COVID, but you, you, your client, your counterpart are also impacted by the, the COVID. So, uh, Google meetings are not possible, visit of site are not possible. Hopefully, we already start. Uh, work with video visit for for, for offices. So uh, we just intensify uh, the, the digitalization of those uh, visits. So uh, that allow clients, potential clients, to continue uh, selecting uh, some uh, properties. But for sure, uh, we work on different asset class, and the the COVID. Uh, affect those asset class differently. Uh, if we just speak about the retail, nothing happened on the retail side. It's really uh, difficult. And uh, it's a question that I've seen in the list, uh, so we will discuss as okay. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Maybe Romain, uh, you might want to share a little bit uh, how is uh, your company and you personally going through that uh, period? Of course, uh, I will be much shorter as our company is smaller than Vincent's company. Uh, but um, as we are European asset manager, of course, the digitalization and working with digital tools uh, 
uh, is um, is uh, daily business uh, within our team because we have different teams which are based across Europe, and uh, we are talking. We are used to talk all together uh, via via digital. Uh, uh, on the other side, which is more difficult uh, within us and uh, on the different teams, is having physical uh, people people around. Uh, uh, sharing ideas and, and sharing uh, new new thoughts uh, and, and having physical meetings with clients, of course, because it's quite difficult to share uh, physical ideas and and uh, the business development plans uh, via a conference call, uh, having a physical meeting in front of the client. Uh, but so far, so far, so good uh, for for us. Okay, fine. Now, uh, after uh, the first shock, now we are in the fifth or sixth weeks uh, now soon uh, of the situation from a helicopter view. How, how do you experience the market? Uh, you are predominantly Luxembourg market players. So what is the market feeling? I mean, we, we started to talk about different asset classes because I think we have clearly a, a difference in the impact of the impact on, on, on office uh, in comparison to residential and retail or even speaking about logistics. So as you are broadly connected in the market, can you please share a little bit of your experience coming from clients or your own teams, what you see, what's happening? One other question included embedded in would be as well, how about transactions? Are transactions still happening? What do you see? Maybe um, Vincent to start with, please. And just as a side note, we have now 120 uh, uh, followers uh, in that call. Uh, you can't see them, but I got the note from our administrator. Now 130 viewers are online with us now. So thank you all for joining. Vincent, please, floor is yours. Okay. Um, I, I will go through uh, asset class by asset class. Uh, the good news is for logistics, uh, of course, and it's, it's, it's a logical uh, conclusion. Uh, uh, we need goods continuing to be distributed, delivered to a final customer, uh, as uh, we are all uh, uh, in a situation where you cannot go and shop as usual, logistic uh, is key. So all the logistic uh, properties are doing well uh, and we can imagine that in the, in the coming month uh, that an asset class that will be uh, uh, maybe not on top list for acquisition but for some specialized fund, uh, logistic will continue to be uh, top and, and yields could be uh, compressed. Um, regarding offices uh, and, and, and the global, uh, the global uh, feeling, it's too early to, to, to have conclusion of any kind. Uh, specifically in Luxembourg, where most of the tenants are institutional uh, and being a property manager, we, we see already a collection of uh, rent for a uh, month of March and, and, and uh, prepayment on April. And we see no disturbance at all on the side of the offices business. Uh, no, for sure, some transaction are, are still on the way uh, that have been initiated before the, the COVID uh, lockdown uh, period. Uh, some institutional funds has decided to continue to investigate what is for sale and to continue to analyze the files, but decide to wait uh, the end of the crisis before going further. Uh, for sure, some funds who are more uh, aggressive, added value uh, uh, behavior uh, are ready to go on some uh, distress, but for the time being, there is no distressed assets on, on the market. Maybe it's too early. Uh, but if the situation continues, be sure that 
some will appear uh, in the market because some uh, actors will have to sell without any choice. Um, regarding the yield, for the time being, no move on, on, on yield. Uh, again, it's too early. Uh, but have you seen, Vincent, have you any seen transactions being abandoned and blocked due to the crisis? I think we have to look at it as well on a timeline. In the first week, as of let's say the 13th or 17th of March, everything was very new and maybe deals have been still pertained and, and, and closed. Um, but uh, it, it, over the last five weeks, can you see a behavior change of investors or of actors in the market related to the situation and the potential impact in the future? Most, most of the deals that have been launched before the COVID-19 has been closed or on the way to be closed. The, 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 the institutional funds, most of them receive instruction to continue analyzing the market, but before they issue a new LOI on a new uh, proposal, that is small, uh, uh, I, 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 I see nothing coming significant in, 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 uh, in the coming days, uh, weeks. And, and it makes sense because there is a lot of uncertainty in this, uh, in this uh, crisis. Uh, but on the letting side, uh, a main uh, lease contract has been signed uh, this week or last week uh, with the state for 17,000 square meters. Another one will be officially uh, uh, announced uh, end of this week or next week for another 10,000 square meters. And uh, we sign a, a lease by tomorrow for another 4,000 square meters. So what have been initiated, find a, a, a good end. Uh, it's for the new uh, decision that is more uh, the new files that is more complex. Uh, so I, I, I'm sure we will have a kind of uh, a very calm period on the side of uh, the, the investment volume. Uh, but again, we are still in the crisis. Are we in the middle of the crisis? Are we at the end of the crisis? I, I'm sorry, but uh, that's hard to predict, but in the conversation you have with your clients and your partners, what has changed in, 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 in their questions? And uh, is the phone ringing less because less interest or it's still ringing, but the questions have changed and uh, more uncertainty. How, how do you see, the act? we can't predict the future. That's much too early to say, but uh, uh, money I think is still out there, investment money to be invested. So um, is there a, a shift or maybe is it generating interest from some investors for other opportunities coming up at the same time? We, we receive from some uh, added value uh, uh, funds or, or family office. Uh, we receive clearly a message that if we heard something distressed, they are really ready, they are full cash and ready to go. Uh, but it's too early. Uh, we only have a, 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 a less than two months uh, in this uh, lockdown uh, period. Uh, people are fighting to find way with the government, with the banks to continue the activities, to find solutions, etc., etc. Uh, just few were already almost chapter 11 before the crisis will, will, will fall down. But conclusions are not yet on the table. Conclusion that you have to sell is not yet on the table. So for the time being, people are looking, uh, observe the market, uh, but for sure we, 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 we have less uh, files on, 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 on the way. That's, that's for sure. Uh, we have less phone calls uh, and, and we try through these kind of uh, uh, connections and, and uh, we go to our clients 
and uh, have open discussions with clients. But for the time being, conclusions are not on the table yet. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. Thank you for that. Um, Roma, can you please share your view of, uh, uh, of the situation and what you've going through over the last weeks? First of all, I'm, I'm very happy to, to see that finally Vincent has no crystal ball either. <laughs> but um, <laughs> on the, I would say we are today in a, in a, in a, in a not comparable situation because uh, to, to today's market, we are not in a financial crisis. Uh, today, we are in a, in a lockdown period, I uh, would say, where the economy is, is slowed down due to the pandemic effect. Uh, and real estate is always uh, a long-term investment. It's never, it's not comparable to the stock exchange where you have a fluctuation, I would say, with one hour you could, could lose 50% in your, uh, on your investment. Real estate is, is a long-term uh, in investment. Uh, as well, on the occupier side, it's a location, it's a quality, and it's, uh, it's uh, I would say, uh, the occupancy, how you structure the occupancy about uh, your, your real estate. Either it is uh, housing or, or, uh, or offices. I think the, the lockdown period uh, will certainly have an impact on the reflection on most of the companies which are in Luxembourg, as well as on, on private individuals, uh, because those people, uh, they, they will, will see exactly uh, during this period that maybe they are, they are housing, uh, where they have to work inside today uh, with their, their wife or their husband, they have two kids inside, is maybe not adapted anymore in the today's market. So some of the people they will certainly, after the crisis, adapt the space where they live. Other companies on the, on the real estate market for offices, they will maybe restructure uh, the, the, uh, the organization internally, having maybe less density, more people uh, on, the, on the home working side, depending, of course, on the uh, financial taxation impact with our cross-border employees. Uh, so I, I think there, there might be on the one side, on the uh, office take up, maybe a, a slowdown on the activity uh, for companies which have not yet started uh, their, their thoughts about moving and with concrete plans. Uh, but I think after the, uh, the lockdown period, uh, there will be certainly some reflections uh, for companies and for private individuals to adapt their private or in a professional environment uh, due to, I would say, the pandemic uh, situation. And on the, uh, on the investment side, uh, there, is, there is more appetite even, I think, as, as before, because people have seen on the stock exchange, and of course, it remains very uh, 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 volatile uh, on their investment and a lot of people have called us as, uh, uh, as asset management and on my way to structure a new fund to see how far we are ready to invest money into, into real estate. Uh, so I think the, the question is, is there is still appetite uh, from the investment side? Yes, a lot. Uh, of, uh, of appetite is there. Uh, we have been uh, closing one transaction, a retail, large retail transaction at the end of uh, February uh, for Shopping Center Luxembourg. And I think, of course, retail is a subject of, uh, of uh, financing today, which is certainly more difficult as financing other assets. Uh, and we are on an exclusivity on a large asset in Luxembourg, which is uh, above 100 million uh, euros. And there were no change uh, from the bank in terms of, uh, of, uh, of leverage or in terms of, 
uh, of yield of um, of, um, uh, of interest rates. So uh, I would say the banking industry will follow the market and they will not change any of, of their, of their uh, uh, matrix uh, figures. I, I think the market, at least on the investment side, will certainly uh, continue to go to go successfully uh, in, in the future. Well, now you just mentioned um, retail. Uh, in Luxembourg, uh, we have major retail projects ongoing or retail projects which came to the market just at the end of last year. Um, uh, now, Hamelius is not fully finished. Uh, do you have a feeling, a sentiment about uh, the impact of the crisis related to that sector in the market uh, as well, uh, Vincent? I mean, you can't predict anything, but maybe you have already some, 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 some feedback coming from the markets related to maybe existing tenants, future tenants. Uh, how do you see that situation? Of course, I would say the, the retail sector is, uh, is hidden very hardly. And of course, on the other side, you have to make a differentiation between uh, the different activities. If it is uh, 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 a bar, a restaurant, or uh, um, a, a clo clothes shop, uh, because they are, they are hidden on, on, a, on a different manner. And of course, you have to make a differentiation on the international uh, brand, on the international group, uh, or, or a local private private, private individual. Because when you look to, to some of the international brands, uh, some are doing not so bad, even if they have lost uh, a big part of their, of their income. Uh, but on the other side, most of the international brands, uh, they, they are able to sell online today. And I would say a lot of people have ordered online uh, uh, tools, so they are they are doing uh, quite well. Taking into account uh, that in different countries in Europe, uh, the, the state is helping them uh, either with with uh, some some uh, tax reductions. Uh, in Luxembourg, uh, they are paying eighty percent on their. Uh, on the salary of their of their uh, staff, so I think globally, some of the brands uh, they have a large and a good chance to survive. Other, of course, uh, more private individuals which are uh, running running shops or bars or restaurants, uh, they might be more uh, difficult uh, um, uh, be hidden by by this uh, lockdown. Uh, of the market, uh, we have we have been talking to other uh, owners in Luxembourg, and there is really, I would say, a, a strong uh, um, willingness of the retail owners to find solutions with each individual retail occupiers, really to to find a way how each individual owner can help them uh, to uh, to come smoothly and and on a good shape out of the uh, of the pandemic but on the other side other side i have to say as well uh, the the retail uh, the the uh, um, um, the uh, real estate sector uh, is uh, what we called an in uh, an economic uh, circular so the, the 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 retailer which are not paying paying uh, uh, the rent, the owners cannot pay, pay back the loan on the bank. Uh, the banks have trouble at the end. So everything is linked. So it's, it's really good uh, that the banks are, are willing as well to sitting around the table and to find solutions, how we can help each individual uh, yeah. find a way out of the, uh, of, of the pandemic. Okay, well, thank you, Roma. Um, I don't know, you might have your screen as well, but I see there's so much chat traffic ongoing. Uh, it's hard for me to, to, to read all your questions at the same time and moderate uh, uh, the, the webinar, but uh, I'm really uh, grateful to see that there's a good exchange among you on, on all of those topics and all well-known members are more or less present here, so great for this. I, I just want to pick up one question I could retain from, from the chat. This was related to um, 
the ESG and sustainability. Prior to the crisis, uh, everybody was uh, looking at ESG, sustainability is the buzzword of the year. Of course, now the shadow of Corona is on top of all of it. Would you have an idea or a sentiment related to uh, the intention to further develop sustainable assets, um, deals, uh, looking at the ESG component of all of our doing? Do you think the crisis will change that uh, intention we've been so much focusing on prior to the crisis? Maybe Vincent for a change? Uh, again, to, to earlier, to, to, to have conclusion, but uh, look, look at the, the, uh, the traffic of message through the, the different networking uh, regarding uh, before COVID-19, after COVID-19, uh, look at the uh, ecolo ecological uh, aspect and uh, so many uh, influencer, uh, so many uh, leaders in the uh, in a kind of new way of uh, the future. That lockdown opened eyes to many people on uh, what do we really want as 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 the world where we live to, together, all together. So for sure, this crisis will have uh, a, a deep influence uh, on some investors uh, uh, or, or clients uh, behind the, the, the asset managers uh, in the way they look uh, investment. Uh, the question is really, uh, after lockdown, after COVID-19, do we run business as usual or do we reinvent the world? Uh, that's a more uh, philosoph philosophical uh, question, uh, philosophic question, sorry. Uh, but you, you feel that something is it's happening. Uh, no, again, Luxembourg is a kind of an island in the storm. All the questions you can raise on real estate regarding Luxembourg uh, really uh, depend uh, are, and answers are directly linked to the quality of the and the continuity of the financial place. Uh, and it seems from what I heard uh, up to today that uh, we are we are again. Uh, out of the, uh, not totally out of the storm, for sure. Huh? If you speak with uh, the, 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 the director of a shop or of a restaurant, uh, he, will, he will have a different speech. But globally, the financial place, uh, fund industry, uh, private equity, and uh, family office uh, business are, are still continuing to work and, and, and doing business. Uh, at the end, Luxembourg is not the reference to uh, make conclusion on the global uh, economy, as the COVID is global. So the new world or the world after the COVID will be global. Uh, and, and, and you can feel this, that a lot of people are not ready to continue as before. Yeah, I'm for sure that we will not continue uh, as uh, before um, when the lockdown is over and people go back to work. I think uh, there is probably a change of paradigm in the way as we work. And uh, I think a lot of people have been surprised and companies how well it works, uh, well, at least in the financial sector, working remote. And, and that uh, way of working remote um, will probably track behind as well um, the, the request from uh, maybe many staff uh, and team members to partly continue to work from home uh, uh, once or twice a week. So, and, and we covered that in, in, in the first uh, instant uh, today. Um, this might change as well the way we plan for office space and this might be as well a change in the, the need for, for office space. Have you had internally in your company's uh, prim preliminary discussions about that. Do we need still as much office space as we intended to need? Um, and, and 
does it change maybe the potential uh, future business pipeline for, for Luxembourg as we talk about Luxembourg? I think that's a question which uh, is in the mindset of uh, many developers in Luxembourg. Would you both have a view on that as well? Yes, of course. Uh, we, we even uh, inside, in a way, where we are at 65, we have a working group that have been created uh, in the course of this uh, lockdown period, uh, working group uh, the, the in charge of uh, uh, organizing the, the, the home working for the future uh, with rules, with security, uh, with, with uh, a fiscal view. As Romain said, uh, there is a, uh, for Luxembourg, a real issue uh, on the home working for all the commuters because uh, Belgium, France or Germany have different rules and uh, commuters are limited on the home working for some days per, per, per year. Uh, but at the end, with this uh, life experience that we all have to to uh, to live uh, and imagine this kind of conference how, how many of us around this conference did participate to webinar before the crisis i never participate myself to a webinar before the crisis i participate to video conference just a few but today uh, it's four or five video per day and uh, at least two webinars a week. So something is changing and, and for sure this will influence the office market. You can read on the specialized uh, literature uh, some, some prediction or some stat uh, with, with figures percentage going from 10 to 20% of uh, home working or, or, or is this meaning that you need 10 20 percent less in the office not directly space will be used differently uh, and 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 again as this period is a massive uh, experience is a is massive in terms of volume uh, big companies as small companies are on, on the same level uh, regarding the, 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 the home working and, and continue their activities. So uh, the answer to put in place after the COVID-19 will be different uh, depending on the, the, the kind of business you run. Uh, and not everybody I don't know if you experience the same, but not everybody is equal vis-a-vis -vis home working. Some people are not able to work alone at home. You have also something very sensitive over there. Uh, some people need to be in a team. They need a leader in front of them, etc. Uh, so it's not an, uh, a such easy question to answer, but you can guess between 10 and 20% impact. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, I think uh, all the, the outcome as well from the crisis will be a push uh, towards digitalization. Do we need really to travel so much anymore on the other means of uh, communication? I mean, when we gather 140 people as of now in Luxembourg via iPhone and computers, and we still have a communication ongoing, we have a chat running besides, we are seeing and, and exchange that. that that's a new change and uh, I mean the IT was already quite ready but maybe we see more digital conference rooms now in the future and as well about um, what I can witness from my side I mean we are a management company we have funds we have our clients are setting up funds um, problem we see with clients who would like to launch their funds is that uh, investors who are very much interested to uh, sign uh, up for, for a subscription to the fund but they want to perform the due diligence, the physical visit, and they are not able to travel, to travel across the globe to visit the assets. So this is hindering uh, the fund launch process uh, as a very important uh, uh, part of it. So if there is a way maybe by digitalization to visualize, and I think the technology is already there in the market, but to, to bring it to comfort and to reliable comfort to investors, 
that you can go to Australia and visit whatever an asset and then and, and you go through the asset with your head mask or whatever. I think this might be an impact that we, we will see in the future as well. But um, I w w want to pick up on another question I, I had from the floor. How, what do you see related to rent payments and to disruption, uh, tenants not able to pay? Um, we, to my knowledge, don't have any uh, uh, the subvention by the state related to help uh, in that context as we see it in, in Germany or in other bordering countries. Maybe uh, what's your experience and maybe to change Roma, uh, can you maybe start with what you see and uh, uh, share that with us? Uh, of course, um, regarding the, the rental payment, uh, as I said before, especially for retail, it's an issue because there is no income on one side. On the other side, uh, we, we are lucky to be in Luxembourg where we had uh, um, a financial situation uh, by the government which is, which is pretty good and they developed uh, a lot of packages to, to support them. On the other side, they will, the Luxembourg country and the government can never uh, afford to, to pay all the income loss for all the, the retailers uh, on site. Uh, so and as I said before, it's 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 for every landlord uh, to 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 look case by case to the tenant situation. Either they they have to uh, to find a solution uh, with the suspended uh, rent to 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 uh, I would say to to divide the rent on on the next twelve months or six months or twenty four months or even longer. Uh, if the lease contract uh, has a longer period. So it's, I would say, the idea behind this is to, to find a way how the impact on the, on the suspended uh, rent has not too much impact on the, on the financial effort which the retailer has to do after the, uh, the lockdown period. When I, I saw different uh, messages to say retail, it's uh, minus 10, minus 15 percent. I would say even some of the retailers, if we, we give them minus 30 percent, they will not survive. Uh, so it's not sometimes a question of minus 30 percent on the on the two days rent. It's more uh, a question to say how we can, uh, in a common sense, discuss with the retailers and find a solution uh, to support them uh, in surviving after the crisis. Of course, if you compare that you have a retailers uh, that before the crisis, they were already virtual uh, bankrupt. For them, of course, even if, if you offer them now minus 30%, they, they will not survive because before they were already a virtual bankrupt. So, uh, uh, the, the rent is some, something where each of the landlords has to find a solution, a viable solution, uh, keeping into the mind that commercial effort of the retail has to, has to be uh, uh, on a level where, where he can uh, live with. And, and that's the way, on an intelligent manner, everyone has to, to structure and uh, to, to be close to his tenant, to find a way and to help them both out of the crisis, even the landlord. Because the landlord, without having any rent being paid of the tenant, he, could not, he cannot survive uh, as well. And you have to, uh, to take into mind as well that the different shops uh, around Luxembourg and outside of the shopping centers are, are uh, um, uh, are owned often by private individuals and it doesn't mean that that you, if you own a shop that you are a rich person and you don't need rent there are uh, people uh, which are which are in 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 in, uh, in homes today which need to have the rental income to pay uh, to pay where where they live today for for the for the uh, medical help they, they they have so everything is linked together and everyone has to make an effort and understand each other. As your company is not only invested in Luxembourg, I think, uh, do you see any difference uh, uh, 
in comparison uh, to Luxembourg, how other countries deal with the same situation and the same request of uh, their tenants? Of course, uh, I would say uh, in different countries, uh, if I take, for example, France, uh, the, the, uh, the scenario is completely different because the, uh, the government decided uh, that a tenant has not to pay, the retail tenant has not to pay, to pay any rent. Uh, and of course, somewhere uh, they didn't care uh, how, you, how you deal with your bank. Uh, they, they go from the situation that if you are owner of a, of a retail, a space somewhere you are rich and you can afford uh, to, to to live without without any any rent and, and any service charge which is which is in most cases not the case okay and that's all uh, what, uh, what's your experience related to that uh, we we with our property management team uh, we have some uh, retail park and uh, and uh, high street uh, shops and the management and uh, yeah no surprise huh? as from Roman said they, they oh, most of them or if not hundred percent most of them did stop paying the rent uh, we recommend a, a fair discussion between tenant and uh, and landlord there is solution to uh, all reduce the rent and in counterpart extend the lease and if it's a if it's a, a good tenant with a good track record the landlord could make a, a value uh, on long term and and help his tenant so by a reduction of the rent or cancellation of a month but you extend the, the lease contract by a year to year but please keep the, the, the discussion between landlord and, uh, and uh, tenant. Now, if the state take a decision in the sense of the French decision, that's something else. And that for sure uh, will make some, uh, will create some uh, distressed uh, assets. Because if there is no- hey, rent, Vincent, that brings me to a question coming from the floor, asking the panelists, do you think that the Luxembourg government is doing enough to support the crisis and the actors? Uh, if I compare to the different neighbors, uh, yeah, they, they, they do a, a lot first and, and before the business, from the sanitary uh, point of view, uh, we are one of the, the, the best, uh, uh, one of the best in, in the Eurozone uh, to organize uh, the logistic of the mask, to organize the hospital, the, 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 the equipped uh, bed in, 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 in the uh, different hospital, etc. So on that point, I think we are in the right country. Uh, it took some time, but can imagine it's not a, an easy situation to manage. But finally, there is some help on the table for, for, for the economy uh, and, and quite a lot. Uh, and now the, there is some, the, 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 the bond uh, issue closed yesterday uh, above 2 billion euro uh, in 24 hours. Uh, we receive help of uh, the, the state as, as company with uh, using the chômage partiel, partial uh, unemployment uh, plan. Uh, now, regarding the specific asset class and the occupiers of the, 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 the retail uh, industry, uh, I think no, they have to go further because you will have a lot of bankrupt uh, companies uh, in the after COVID uh, and, and I'm speak about what make the lives in the city. I'm not speaking about the big international brands. I speak about those nice bar, restaurant, uh, independent shops uh, and, and those need to be helped, those need to re reopen as soon as possible in respect of the sanitary rules. But please, 
if somebody can pass uh, again the, the message and you can look at the communication of the CLC, you will have other deaf people uh, next to the COVID-19 deaf people. That's for sure. We need quality of life in Luxembourg. They need to be helped or they need to open again. So I could understand that a restaurant can not open right now, but some shops could open with limitation of people inside the, the room, with, with uh, gloves, with mask, uh, with gel, equipped, controlled, and, and, and that will be made uh, in, in full security. Uh, I, I really agree, Vincent. I, I think that some, some shops uh, could, really, uh, could really open, for example, hairdressers and everything, where you need to have, to have an appointment to go inside where you can control the flu of the people. Uh, so I think some shops could really be uh, looked uh, from the government on a, on a different manner and, uh, and agree that they can, they can open. And on the financial package, I fully agree that the state did a lot. On the other side, uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the independent workers, uh, where a lot of independent workers uh, are owners of a bar, are owners of, of a restaurant, uh, and we have the feeling as well when, when we see what the state is doing that they are somewhere uh, lost in the, in, the big, in the big picture and, and the state is moving up now slowly uh, to identify how, how they could help them and support them as well. Uh, but most of, of them, the, the private individuals, are the people uh, which have, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a big exposure to be bankrupt after the uh, the financial crisis, after the the uh, the corona uh, lockdown. And it is uh, you are agreeing it was a good state help uh, initially provided by the government, and now it's sensitive and it's crucial to uh, to to open this uh, lockdown in a manner not to damage severely the economy and the small business and uh, 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 make sure that we keep the balance between uh, financial health and uh, yeah, security related to, to protect ourselves. And uh, I guess a new, a new uh, step in that will be the opening of the schools. Um, we can protect ourselves all at home, working remote, but if kids go to school in exchange with uh, plenty of others, uh, they take it home. So that's uh, certainly uh, that's a challenge for all of us. Um, that's, that's true. Um, one question again from the floor, we want to keep it short. Do you have any view on um, the finance side of real estate at the moment? Do you see a change in habits of banks, a change in conditions? Uh, uh, there might be uh, uh, LTV changes, there might be liquidity premiums, risk premiums. What do you see on ongoing uh, finance of portfolio in comparison maybe to transactions? But uh, we are getting close to the end. Keep it short if you can. Well, qu quickly, uh, LTV has, is, 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 is moving, which is comprehensive, and cost of liquidity is increasing. Or the rise, uh, you, you, again, uh, common sense, a new, a new client showing up uh, in a bank uh, with access to credit uh, will, will be disregard, may, may make sense. Uh, if you have great long relationship with your bank, uh, they, they will continue uh, running business with you with some slight difference in the conditions. But uh, banks are, uh, are, are, are there uh, to support the economy. And, and they know that they have to support as well the economy because uh, it's not just this period, it's tomorrow as well. That's, that's the, big, the big change, I think, when we compare, uh, because a lot of people compare today with 2008, and I think that's the big change today. It's not a financial crisis. The, the, the banks, they are there, and as the Luxembourgish government said as well, we were there in 2008 to support all the banks and did everything uh, to support them and to survive and to get again on the on the good direction, it's now uh, 
um, to the banks to support the economy as well, to support financing on real estate. And what we saw uh, within a larger transaction, that there was a slight change uh, on, the, on the LTV, what you said before, uh, but it was not a massively change on the, on the, uh, on the leverage uh, percentage. It was slightly corrected, uh, but we were very happy to see uh, that there was uh, still uh, financing uh, possibilities and banks were still open to, to discuss financing even with a large uh, project in, in Luxembourg. Okay, thank you, Roma. Well, um, as, as a closing uh, remark from both of you, I, I would like maybe to share with us uh, what is your personal view of that situation and, and what is your sentiment looking ahead? Is it conditioned to factors being like what is the speed of taking off the, the, the locking period or not? And what, how do you see the Luxembourg and, and our joint uh, real estate economy doing and going through uh, with a forecast of maybe six to 12 months, if you can. Maybe, uh, Roma, you want to start? <laughs> um, of course, I would say, uh, as, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always very, very positive about, about things. And I think that's, for me, it, it's a key message. I would say if everyone, if everyone sits in the corner and is crying, uh, I would say it could, could, will not go in, in the good direction. So we have to think positive and, and support uh, all our, our tenants and support, support the market, support ideas, work out uh, different uh, scenarios in, in, in the future and, 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 and help certainly people because we know that the, uh, uh, the confidence uh, uh, of, of, the, of the people is down. So we have to support uh, the confidence factor that, that people uh, should be confident in the future and, uh, and help all, all those people which need help during the pe period where the market is, uh, is slowed down to survive during this period. And afterwards, I would say, even if, if it costs a little bit money during the, the slowdown period, I would say it will cost less on a short term period as in the long term period after the, the lockdown period. Thank you very much, Romain. Uh, Vincent, what would you like to give us as a takeaway? Um, real estate is a consequence of the, the, the global economy of Luxembourg. Uh, real estate is not the engine of the economy. So uh, reactivate the economy as soon as possible is, is key uh, to avoid uh, too much uh, damage uh, uh, for, 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 for the people and, and, and consequently as well uh, for, for, the, for the real estate. Uh, we didn't uh, approach the residential uh, uh, asset class. Uh, there is a lot of speculation regarding the, the, the the residential. Uh, I will conclude on, on, on my, my feeling. Uh, for sure, there is a risk of price adjustment. Uh, certainly not an increase of price. Uh, I, I've saw some comment uh, um, on the internet. Uh, production is reloaded, uh, but on the side of the demand, uh, Roma used the, the, the confidence uh, of the consumer in the economy and uh, this is key. So if you run today a survey on the confidence of the consumer, uh, it's, it's almost zero or close to zero uh, and you do not uh, uh, send you, you, you cash uh, you, you do not uh, invest quite a lot uh, when your confidence is zero and the confidence depends on the dynamic of the economy. So reload the economy as soon as possible, of course, in the full respect and control of the uh, COVID-19. Thank you. This uh, 
was uh, the closing words of today. It's 12 o'clock. Um, well, uh, my dear panelist, uh, Vincent Roma, many, many thanks to have spent this hour with us. All the thanks as well to all our viewers. I'm very glad to see that even till the end, we have 125 viewers bearing with us. Many, many thanks. It was our first webinar. Uh, others will follow. We will keep you informed about the next webinars coming up. Uh, ESG is as well still a non topic we would like to now to put into a webinar form. Uh, but uh, please uh, follow us and uh, stay with us. And uh, thanks again to all of you. Last information this um, webinar will be uploaded to our website for those who have had to leave us or could not make it today. But uh, I want to thank you again, and I hope to hear and to see you soon. And please uh, be safe and take care of you. Thank you all. Bye now.